Hello everyone. Here's some comedy for you to enjoy. I hope you like it. Um, I don't know how many of you go to Lava's to buy stuff these days or Ikea and find the place to be so big that uh, you get frustrated going in there. You know, you go to Lava's these days and uh, you need to make a grocery list. But we walk in there and you find that you're at one end of the store and everything else that you want to buy is at the other end of the store. So you go in, you can't even just go in and buy things anymore. You need to make a grocery list and then categorize it by areas. Because these days when you walk into these Loblaws and Ikeas and all these big stores like Walmart, they have things all over the place, it's huge. It's not like the old days of walking into a grocery store and you can go and grab a couple of things and walk out. You go in, you need a map. And you gotta make sure you do some rocket signs and organizing yourself, otherwise you walk into the store, you're gonna find yourself getting your vegetables, your fruits, and after you've gotten that, you walk down. Let's say you're making a burger. You walk in, you get your lettuce, tomatoes, and then you go over to get your meat. After you get your meat, you realize that, oh, I think I forgot the ketchup and the mustard. And after looking at it, and looking at where you have to go to get the ketchup and mustard, you say, no, screw that. I'm just gonna take my lettuce, tomatoes, and go make myself a burger without ketchup and lettuce, uh, ketchup and mustard. Uh, then you walk out the store, and you got some guy trying to sell you a mortgage. You get a mortgage from Wawa's, you can get a loan to buy a car. It's ridiculous. Uh, <clears throat> Um, sometimes I find myself at the uh, Lava's counter at the cashier going, um, <clears throat> okay, well, there's the express counter, one to eight items, and I got about 30 things. What do I do now? Do I go through the express counter and, you know, maybe I have about 10, 12 items and it's one to eight. You'll go start piling your stuff up and somebody behind and in front of you is starting to look at you and go, give you that look, but they're not saying anything to you, you know that you're in trouble because you're unloading more than your allotted one to eight items. Anyway, um, <clears throat> let me start this again. Here's some comedy I hope uh, you enjoy. Um, I don't know how you find these days with uh, road planning and stuff in Ottawa and major cities these days, especially I found going to driving in Ottawa is becoming a bit of a challenge where um, you miss a turn. They're starting to build these new ter uh, roads with the median in the middle. The median is the size of uh, a street itself, a lane itself, and you miss a turn, you can, uh, you know, you're in Woodruff going up uh, Woodruff Avenue, trying to get to um, a friend's place, and you may make you need to make a turn. You miss the turn, and then you can end up in Quebec because there's no way to turn around. There's no place to make a U-turn. And I don't know how you find the lights at these lights. Um, the turns at the lights for left turn is getting a bit ridiculous with uh, the way the Ottawa street planners are doing it these days. That um, you get there and you had to wait at the light for about uh, 15 minutes to make a left turn. You know, they think people have become so stupid these days that uh, you can't even make a left turn anymore. Uh, they have to tell you when to make a turn, the light will tell you. I find that if I'm gonna live in Ottawa for another 10 years, I might spend about you know two years driving and turning than uh, the other maybe eight years living in Ottawa. And the other thing is they have bus lanes in Ottawa, but for some reason they think they should uh, limit that to just buses. Uh, not like in Toronto or Montreal where you can go down a bus lane if you have more than two people. But not in Ottawa, you need um, um, only buses going down those lanes. So it's getting ridiculous. I don't know whether you started uh, watching scary movies these days and uh, when you get to a certain age and you want to watch a scary movie and you're at home, and it's night, the kids are asleep, your wife decided to go to bed, and you're, okay, there's a movie on, let's check this out. You start watching it, and a few minutes later, 
you feel like uh, you're hearing sounds, and you wonder what's going on. Uh, all this time, you know, there might have been the same sounds there, but you didn't hear it till now. You hear the sound and you start freaking out. So you get up, pause the movie, walk around the house, check the doors, and you find that maybe there's one door that wasn't locked. You wonder, is Jason in the house? And, um, you know, you lock the door, and then you wonder, did the kids leave the door open? Oh, somebody get in through the door. Anyway, and you start freaking out a little bit more. You walk around the house, uh, checking to make sure nobody's around, grab a baseball bat and walk around. And then you think, okay, maybe uh, Jason went upstairs. Then I go, oh, my wife is upstairs. You know what? Jason better be scared of that. She's going to be nasty. So I think upstairs is covered. So now I see the basement. I look down. The door is open. I'm wondering, is he downstairs? And you know, that's how the movie starts. You see the basement. And the kids who are not supposed to go to the basement decide to go down. And then find out there's uh, Jason with the chainsaw. Anyway, um, you start freaking out. So you go back to your movie, turn it on, start watching it. You start getting the feeling that something is not right. You just turn off the movie and say, that's enough for the night. Anyway, um, I don't know what you find these days with uh, people at work trying to push Mary Kay and uh, uh, Tupperware and having uh, parties for Tupperware, Mary Kay and um, jockey, underwear. That's a big thing these days. Um, my wife was invited to a jockey underwear party. And then she was telling me, he goes, went there and saw the people around going, okay. Um, spent three hours trying to buy underwear. That's a decision that I go to the supermarket, I mean to the uh, department store and spend five minutes going, what's the size? And what's on sale? And you get it and you come home. The same with Tupperware. How much time do you really need to decide on plastic boxes? A three hour party? Seriously? This is ridiculous, I find. You know, you don't need three hours to be uh, told um, what the benefits are of a plastic box. And then, even if you want this box, you can't walk out with it. Because you've got to place an order, you'll get it in three to five years. I like to go and get some boxes for the food that I'm going to cook this weekend. And if there's leftover, I need a box and I need to walk out the store with those boxes. I don't want it five years from now. With those jockey underwears again, you know, I, if anybody's selling underwear, I'd rather go to a Victoria's Secret uh, store and ask the model to model it for me than go to these parties where the people around are not those people you want to see modeling underwear. Anywho, moving on. I don't know what you f find these days about dating and marriage. You know, before you got married, those dating services these days with Lava Life and Match.com. You want to put in your specs. I'm looking for a woman who's a blue-eyed blonde with, you know, maybe 100 pounds and, you know, who likes to do long walks on the beach. Uh, those were the days, but now after getting married, I actually have different sort of specs, you know, questions that, uh, that are more important. Uh, <clears throat> You know, you become more knowledgeable, you ask questions that are important. What temperature do you like to set the thermostat at? For me, those are important questions. Do you like watching sports on TV? Yes or no? What time do you like to go to bed at night? Which side of the bed do you sleep on? Do you sleep in an angle or straight? Or do you move around a lot? Do you like to cuddle? And you think that you're always right. You know, after getting the answers to those questions, now I can make a real decision on who I want to get married to. Because if those answers are not lining up with my questions, and what I'm thinking to the answer should be, I think we need to look at different models. A little different cars. Sorry. Anywho, so, that's uh, something that I was thinking that, you know, these days, I like to take a different approach with uh, finding a partner, you know, because nowadays you're challenged with a cold house, you want the temperature high, she wants it lower. You know, you're watching a movie, 
your wife comes over, what are you watching? Oh, I'm watching sports or a scary movie. And it's like, what are you watching that for? Change the channel. Why don't we watch like Guiding Light or Days of Our Lives or Young and the Restless or yeah, whatever. You know, so anywho. Um, um, <clears throat> Have you found these days you call a cable company to ask a question about a service problem that you have and maybe your cable is out and the message comes on, your call is really important to us, but please stay on the line until maybe next week when we answer your phone call. Uh, then you get a service, if you're lucky enough to punch in the number or you're trying to use that automated system where you try to say, uh, my name is three or I'm spelling out my number like 613 and it goes 514 no I said 613 oh man you spend like a few minutes and the system says I don't understand you and then fights with you and then hangs up on you no I you know I'd rather have the old system where you phone somebody answers the phone and provides service even if you get somebody on the line they stay on the line and tell you things like you know or you want a service call how about I'll book you something uh, between, you stay home between tomorrow at 10 a.m. and next Thursday till about 7 p.m. and we'll be at your house between those time frames. That's what you're getting these days, you know. In the old days, you can get somebody to come and fix your thing. Maybe, worst case scenario, take a day off and deal with it. Nowadays, you take a half day off and then you get a phone call saying, oh, I'm delayed at a job and I'm going to show up at 9 o'clock at night while my kids are sleeping and come and make a lot of noise in my house and wake all the kids up and then I have to deal with that. Who needs this crap? Anyway, get frustrated phoning these cable companies who tell you your call is important to us and then you spend all kinds of hours waiting for them to answer the phone, come to do a service call, or whatever it is. It's ridiculous these days. Going back to my uh, pet peeve with Ikea and large stores. Have you been to Ikea these days? They're getting bigger and bigger. You walk in and you don't know how to get out. They get you in, they don't even show you where the exit door is. Because you gotta go through every single department in that store before you can find an exit door and get out of this place. It's ridiculous. Um, I went in there, this is a big one. I think I spent about four or five hours trying to get myself out of that place. Who wants to buy furniture at a store that you pay for and then you get all these pieces, you bring it, open the door, open the box up, and you get the instruction with 50 billion pieces, then I have to put it together. So I'm doing all the work and what are these guys doing? Chopping the wood for me? This is ridiculous. Anyway, um, I always put these things together and then I find I have about 10 screws left and going, hmm, that shelf I just put up? It's going to drop on my kids one day, I don't know when, because I've got 10 screws and I don't know what to do with them. So I've done this so many times and end up with screws. Sometimes you, it doesn't say there are going to be spare screws sitting there. you got 10 to 15 screws and a piece of, a couple of wood pieces sitting there going, hmm, did I miss something along uh, the line there? Anyway, like I think IKEA has got to next build another store or the same store. You open the door and you got a forest of trees and somebody's going to give you an axe and say here have fun pay me a hundred dollars cut up a tree make your own table that's how it's going to be these days uh, with the way uh, these ikea stores are going i'm not a big fan of these putting together stuff because i hate putting it together i hate following directions i've almost dropped shelves on my kids trying to put the damn thing together because my when i was putting it together with my small kids running around at age two they're running around and this I'm holding this piece of wood that's going to drop on their head anytime soon. And when I have screws left, it's going to drop in the next few years. Anyway, um, so I, I hate uh, putting this stuff together and finding out that, uh, you know, you buy a product. I like to buy a chair and somebody makes it, puts it together, puts all the screws, brings it to my front door and says, here's the chair, where do you want it? I don't want somebody to bring me a box of wood and say, here, put it together. This is crazy. Anywho, um, 
And then they got all the incentives to, I got people, relatives that I know will camp out at Ikea for breakfast, because the breakfast, a buck or something. I don't know, I haven't been there, so I don't know, buck 99 or something. And then your lunch is a hot dog for a buck, a huge hot dog for a buck. And dinner, spaghetti for another two dollars. Like, they bring you in with all this incentive with low prices and well, they have to feed you and you spend five hours trying to get the hell out of that store. So, anyway. Um, me, I'm not a big fan of Ikea or any place where I have to put the stuff together. I pay you money, you put it together, bring it and leave it in my house and I'm happy. Thank you very much. So, um, I don't know whether you find it frustrating driving down the street and you see uh, all these uh, people with signs on their car. You got moms with signs saying, baby on board. So I'm thinking you got to be careful around these people. They have the baby in their car. Well, normally I'm careful, but more extra careful now. There's a baby in the car. And then I pass them. A few minutes later, this woman is like cutting people off, cutting me off, cutting everybody off and going, I'm going, you got a baby on board and you're driving like that? Are you crazy? And uh, really, if you have a sign on, at least have the courtesy to drive careful. Uh, you got a child in the car or more than one. Take it easy on the road. And then you got the other crazies on the road. They're on the fast lane. They don't know these days what the left lane is the fast lane, right lane is the slow lane. No idea. They're doing, you got an 80 kilometer zone and you got people going at 20 on the cell phone, texting, smoking, coffee, Timmy, everything. And nobody's giving them a ticket. Cops are at the donut shop, I guess, too busy to deal with these crazies who are texting and trying to cause accidents and drive around like a maniac. Uh, that's another frustration with these crazies on the road doing crazy driving, cutting people off, no signaling. Do you like those people, you follow them and they decide to turn? Maybe they live there every day, every year, every day and drive. If you come to the street, you don't signal. You signal ahead of time so that I know you're going to turn and stop soon so that I can slow down, not get to the spot, then put the signal on. The signal is advance warning of what you're doing. So then I can slow down, stay behind and get away from you instead of stopping, signaling and then turning at the same spot. Like what the heck is wrong with you people? I don't know. People uh, have to learn how to drive and it drives me nuts. Anyway, these are the frustrations of uh, being on the road and dealing with crazies who are driving around like crazy. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, sometimes I find that um, after marrying, <laughs> you sometimes you become dumb and dumber sort of thing. My wife, when she gets ready to go out to see her friends or whatever, like, make sure you feed the kids, make sure you uh, change their clothes, brush their teeth. It's like I've become dumb that I don't know what my job as a father is, and you're the only one who knows it, right? That I don't know that I have to make sure the kids are fed, they change diapers, I mean change clothes, PJs, whatever, and get ready for bed. It's not rocket science, I can take care of this myself, thank you very much, I don't need somebody to remind me of this. But when you're going, when I'm going out, do I sit there and go, honey, make sure, feed the kids, walk the dog, you know, make me dinner when I come back, I don't know. So anyway, it gets frustrating and Sometimes, you know, you have your wife, uh, you're making a sandwich, and you go, oh, honey, I'm making a sandwich. And then uh, I'm putting it together, she comes over, look at the mess. Look at the mess you're making. All the bread all over, crumbs everywhere, jam all over, whatever, you know, tuna all over the place. Anyway, so you listen to that, and then you're making your sandwich, and then you go, honey, do you want it? Sandwich, I'm making it. Do you want? No, 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 I don't want any. So you make the sandwich, you're ready to take a bite. She goes, Honey, can I have a bite? Did I not just ask you if you wanted a sandwich? No. Now you want a bite. I hate it when you go to a restaurant, or you're making a sandwich. I want my own sandwich made the own, my own way. I want to eat the entire sandwich. I don't want you to take a bite out of this. And you go to the restaurant, you order food and you're eating and you have a nice sand sandwich and a nice meal and you're eating it and your wife's having a salad and then 
honey, can I have a bite? And then a few minutes later, a few more bites. Like, what the hell's going on here? Can I have my dinner? I want to eat it. I ordered it. I'm going to get fat eating this, but leave me alone. Anyway, so, I don't know whether you've seen uh, some of these people that, uh, you know, know that you're from uh, Sri Lanka or whatever, and they come over and go, find out that you're from Sri Lanka, and they start asking you, oh, so Sri, do you know so-and-so from uh, Sri Lanka? I'm like, okay, there's about a million boat people came here, and you're asking me if I know Mr. So-and-so. You know, there's about 80 million people in that country, and one million of them showed up here, and now you're asking me if I know one of those people. The odds are not good that I know them. And because they know that you're from there, they start naming the restaurant, saying, you know, I've been to a Sri Lankan restaurant. It's like, do I go to an Italian guy and go, hey buddy, I ate at uh, Eastside Mario's, nice Italian food, man. You know, um, you know that place? Know anyone working there or uh, do you own it? It's like, what the hell is this? Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> name dropping is another thing. Even if you find, they find out you work at like Apple and people come over, oh, you work at Apple? Uh, do you know John Smith at Apple? There's about 5,000 people in this building alone. I don't know any of them. You know, I go to my cubicle, work there, make my iPad and get the hell out, you know. So, um, and then, uh, you know, even the Sri Lankans who come over to you and go, you know, like they find out you're from a particular street or neighborhood or whatever. They, you know, so and so from that neighborhood. And I'm like, I left that country when I was like eight years old, and I couldn't even remember my classmates. I can't even remember my classmates from university when I studied just a few years ago. So don't ask me about people from Sri Lanka when I was eight and know if I know this guy on the street. This is crazy, you know. Name dropping, like Dr. So-and-so. Do you know a Dr. So-and-so from Sikh? All right, no, I don't. So I get annoyed with these uh, people uh, trying to name drop and try to find out um, if you know somebody that remote and unknown. Anyway, uh, I don't know whether you have people around you who are uh, have issues with directions and you know you go with your wife and you t turn right and she turns left and you go what the hell we're just going the wrong way now you're going down a major street and turn left and I give her she'll phone me sometimes from downtown and go I'm near this building it's a gray tall building I'm going there must be about five or six gray tall buildings downtown which one are you near can you throw me a street? I can't see, read the street names. I don't know where they are, what that is, what street I'm on. I'm like, great, 1-800-GPS-3. So trying to bring her back here. I remember one day she dropped me off at the airport and I'm going on this trip and um, um, she drops me off, drives home. I'm waiting in the runway for the plane to take off and um, they get a phone call. You know, plan hasn't left, so I can answer my phone. Well, it's my wife, so maybe she's calling to say bye. And so it's like, I think I've been driving up and down this hunt club, and I thought I was going the right way, then I turn around with the other way, and I turn around with the other way, and I'm a bit lost now. So I'm like, okay, can you name me some buildings you're passing, at least hunt club I might know, a few buildings. And it's like, uh, it's all I see is trees. Well, Try to get to a building, maybe a gas station, and ask for help. I can't help you. So that day, she leaves me. Somehow I gave her direction. Gets to our daycare to pick up the kid. She's fined $20 for being late uh, at the daycare. So, you know, she spent, she should have been there on time. So she got fined $20. And she was trying to save me money by dropping me at the airport because I was taken off somewhere for work. So there, you saved money going to the airport, but spent money being fined for being late to pick up the kids. So that worked out well. Um, one day she, uh, we were driving to work and uh, all of a sudden my car stops working. I'm like, what the hell? 
No lights came on, nothing came on to tell me there's an engine problem or something. It just stopped working. So I started, it still doesn't work. Yeah. So then going like, no lights are coming on to tell me something is wrong. Why is, what's going on here? Then I asked her, honey, um, you went to fill up gas yesterday. What did you put? It's uh, like, so I gotta put the regular stuff. Then she goes, oh yeah, you know, I was trying to put the nozzle in and then it wouldn't go in. I'm like, what do you mean it wouldn't go in? I try to put the nozzle in, usually it goes in, but this one wouldn't go in. Then I said, when you were trying to push this in, do you remember that machine in front of you? Did it say diesel on it, maybe? It's like, two minutes later, yeah, I think it might have said that. Well, duh. I think that's why the car's not working. There's diesel in here. So I figured out that's a problem, phone my CAA, take it in. 650 bucks later to drain the...